Hey, welcome back to another podcast. Um, my name is Joe Ulrich, and I'm here with John Wayne, Reverend John Wayne, soon to be very close Dr. John Wayne. Yes. McMahon. Yes. This um, weekend. This weekend. Mm-hmm. I'm happy for you. That's Thank exciting. You. Yep. Uh, but sad because yes. this is our final podcast together. Yes. And you were kind of the one to get this started. Yes. Um, and now you're passing it off. Yeah. So, yeah. You got Mark. We have Mark, yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. But it is sad. I'm yes. sad. I think you're, you have to be sad because I'm your boss. I have to be sad right now because yeah, you're sitting this here. this is being recorded. Yeah. I'm here and I'm not gone yet. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's bittersweet yeah, in, in a lot of ways. And you've been real busy lately with moving and right. kind of being in five places at one time. Right. Right. Lots of travel. Got some like leadership continuing ed stuff. Traveling for school. Uh, funerals and stuff, just all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And then now we officially don't live in Tyler. Right. We live two and a half hours away. Yeah. So that back and forth. I'm crashing with the Donaldsons. Yeah. Marcus Donaldson is my next door roommate. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm in town. That's but cool. It's, it's good. We're, we've got a few weeks left. Good. Yeah. Um. So, so today we'll kind of recap your time here at Marvin. Yeah. In two, the last two and some two years. Yeah. About two years. Yeah. And talk a little bit about the future and kind of, you'll be church planting. Yes. So we'll ask you some questions about church planting too. Yeah. But um, to start, we're trying to think of something funny before we started. And I want to start with that. Um, We, we, we had a fire. Yeah. You want to talk a little bit about that? Early on, I, I don't, core people would remember the torches that my predecessor, David Dorn had, Yes, I think that was his, yeah, his, his touch. Thing. Yeah. So he had these torches and you, you had to put like lighter fluid in them. Some I mean, kind it was of like kerosene something, or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And one of them broke in the bottom and the, while it was lit, like leaked out onto the altar yeah. while the service started at eight 30. And I'm, Y'all, I'm not very handy with anything, and I don't think on my feet. Like I'm better, like right in a in a textbook and like thinking yeah. through my thoughts. So I I don't like my wife's gonna hear this and go, we're in trouble if anything bad <laughs> happens. So this fire starts, and I'm just like looking out in the congregation, and thank God we have multiple firefighters yes. that actually volunteer with us. Yeah. <laughs> and so our our singer Taryn, if you haven't met Taryn's husband, he ran down and took the whole thing, burned his hands, burned his hand, putting the fire out, yep. and taking the taking it outside and taking care of it. Yeah. So he literally picked the the. The, 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 the canister. fire yeah, the, yeah, yeah. yeah he picked it up and it was burning yes. and walked it outside yeah. onto the pavement and then put the fire out and then we had to put the fire out on the altar too yes the, the, it was on and the I think altar. that was like the second or third time the altar has been burned yes and so that was, that was it was time to, to so get rid of it that led you know unfortunate things lead to new things yes so we got a new altar new altar new candles new candles and we have a cross and we have a cross. Which that has that nothing to do my, with the fire. That's, that's my contribution. We needed a cross. That's what, yeah. We were able to get that done. Yeah. So that was good. It was that's fun. good. I was also, I, I forgot about this. So like g- even going back through our time here. So I, I said goodbye to my previous church at the beginning of COVID. I mean, yeah. as, y'all, as y'all said goodbye to the Dorn family. So all of that's happening. We come here and I was actually excited to come from Houston to East Texas yeah. because COVID, um, the way COVID was playing out was not like it was in Houston. Here. Right. So y'all were still in person worship. I yep. had been, I had not been in, or you had come back to in person worship way before right. my last church ever did. And so I get here and the first week, I don't know if you remember this, the very, b- before I was supposed to start, the Sunday before, it's like the last Sunday of June before our July yeah. 1 appointment starts, I get a phone call from Dr. Doug Baker saying, I have to quarantine and we have no preacher for this Sunday in the sanctuary. Yeah. And so I'm like... I, as in Dr. Baker, has to yes. quarantine. Yes. And yeah, so Dr. Baker, and I think Jerry was pre- maybe preaching in core or not preaching. I don't remember. Yeah. So they asked me to come by myself to preach before I was supposed to start and before the congregation had ever seen me before. Yep. And so that Sunday I got up in the pulpit. And you had was, no formal introduction. No, it no was just, I got up in the pulpit hi, to do the call to worship. I'm a new pastor. And I'm like, if you're wondering <laughs> who I am, I'm the new pastor. So that happens in person worship the Sunday before I was supposed to start. 
two days later, COVID takes a turn. Yeah. And we shut down. And my very first Sunday in core and the first like two months was online only. Yep. So I didn't even see people in core yep. for a while. Dang. That's how it started. Oh, and then that one time where you couldn't preach Christmas? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I got Josh Trammell exposed me to COVID. Yeah. Yeah, that was annoying. That's a bummer. Uh, that one was fun. On Monday before, like, I think Christmas Eve was on a Friday or something that week. Yeah. Like, on the Monday, I was sending you all home because I didn't want to risk uh -huh. exposure. And I had one more meeting with Josh. And we ate lunch from me to you long enough. And he got COVID the next day. Wow. So now worship leader and pastor are out for Christmas. So yeah. my first Christmas was this last one here. One. I did one. Sad. You did one. <laughs> I did one Christmas here. So, uh, anyways, that was wild. Do you remember um, Josh and I did the we the wing yep. eating yep. thing? We ate spicy wings while we talked about. Yeah, so we were trying to figure out a way to get to know core people. And it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It was were they fun. really that no, hot though? They weren't. Okay, there was one that was hot. The rest weren't. So because when they do when they actually do hot ones, they're like seriously hot. Yeah, right? they start with a couple that are medium, and yeah. then they end up with stuff that's like I, nuts. I. Don't and even, we tried to do that, but what we got from Buffalo Wild Wings, I think, yeah, was... Not that. No. Yeah. Not I've actually episode. never watched a Hot Ones episode. I know the concept, you know, obviously, I think we but I've watched, never watched like, one. a clip and we were trying to figure out what yeah. to do. I think we were like, oh, yeah, that's We could do idea. this. Yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. And then we did the egg smashing thing, me and Mark. Oh, yeah, Remember I forgot that? about that. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Where you boil, hard boil some of them. Yes. But leave some of them not. Yeah. Yeah, smash them on your head. <laughs> Mark hated that. I bet he it, like he really hated it. That's not that's not his like mo. He's Even, probably glad now that he's coming in after you to be the pastor of core that we don't have to do stuff like that again. Yeah, he gets to be the grown up in the room. Now. I should I should suggest hey we should do an egg thing now that Please you're the do, pastor. Do it, suggest <laughs> something really stupid. Maybe maybe he'll go for it. Like one of those youth group ga games yeah. that's like super cringy. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fun. So anyways, that was fun. I was thinking of the funny funny things we've experienced. We've gone through COVID. We've gone through weird pol political like cycle yeah. stuff the last couple of years. Yeah. Um lots happened in the world. Yeah. A lot, lot of like Sundays where you're like, I gotta talk about this now. So well, why did I why did I look at Twitter right before? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Why, I wish I was ignorant right now. <laughs> yeah. So just a lot of stuff like that. Um and our congregation went through all of that. So right. there, was a, there was some anxiety and struggle, and it was hard to lead in COVID and do the right thing. Yeah. Because what was right for someone here is not right for someone right. there. So anyway, so there was some of that. But I had a great time. I think one of the hardest things, saddest things, just to be honest with you about leaving, I've loved and been so close with the staff. Yeah. Um, you guys are, are, are such a joy, but I've loved y'all from the beginning. Right. And, and we got to be really close. I didn't get to start being really close to the congregation until recently. Right. And so that's what makes that kind of hard. Right. Um, that's the unfortunate part of all of this. And so, yeah, just lo like loving what God's doing and bringing new people and stuff like that to core right now. So it's been fun. Yeah. Um, I was, trying, I was thinking of some of the cool things that have happened since yeah. you've been here too. Not just, not just, you know, f funny things are cool, but, um, and what I thought of recently was the whole class meeting thing. Yes. That's, yeah. that's a big deal. That's yeah. There's cool. like, there's eight class meetings started. Um, the other thing, and I, and I don't say this to brag about it, but the doctoral project was all about class yeah. meetings. And so I say this to celebrate Marvin cause Marvin supported this and right. they were a part of it. And so just that whole doctoral dissertation was based on something that's at Marvin that's at other churches too, but I use Marvin as the Petri dish, as right. the sandbox to figure this stuff out and to train class leaders for class meetings and right. got recognized for my seminary. Um, they're, they're giving me an award at graduation Saturday. That's awesome. It, the award is for outstanding um, dissertation for church renewal, and they only give one out every that's year. Cool. And so that was, that's really cool. Um, so yeah, Marvin is a big part of that. Um, Easter, yeah, we've moved Easter out to the park. Yeah, in the two years yeah. I've been here, that's been that's a been wild, really cool. a wild, cool experience. We were in the newspaper and stuff like that, and tons of people from the community came to that. It's just so fun, uh, particularly post COVID, to see people who hadn't seen each right. other in a while, right? And then to see a lot of people that don't have a church home come right. see us 
on Easter, whether we get to be their church home right. forever, it's just a really cool experience. Yeah. 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 You've, and I don't say this lightly, but you've really been part of um, putting some things in motion that I think will like stand the test of time, you know? I hope so. That's cool. I think there's some really good things that Marvin gets to build on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think I really hope like, and then the class meeting part is from discipleship pathway that Mark's working on. Right. So that stuff continues. Right. Um, I had lunch with class meeting class leader yesterday mm-hmm. and with a couple that's leading a class and they just, God's like just blowing the roof off in their meeting. That's cool. So that stuff's going to continue and really, really can't wait to look, look down the road down the road to look back and, and see what's going on with you guys yeah. and, and where everything stands. So yeah. yeah, it's been fun. I think, I think core stuff like core worship, particularly a lot of our listeners are core. I know there's a lot of Marvin people too, but in core, um, you know, we just, we didn't do anything out like crazy outside the box. We try to simplify right. things and really think about liturgy and what worship means yeah. and what we're doing. And so, small changes to teaching style, Mm -hmm. um, certain sermon series like the Apostles' Creed and preaching through Book of the Bible and things like that, uh, really solidifying some subtle things that I don't even think is ever... It's not not always formally communicated to the congregation all the time, but some things that they get now, if we were to say it out loud. Yeah, Yeah. hey, we're we're focusing on Scripture a lot more. Right. Um, We're trying to pray, uh, try to teach prayer, and trying to teach how we worship together. Mm -hmm. And that goes through song choice and all kinds of stuff. So some really cool stuff. And, And what's great about Mark being the next guy... Uh, to preach and lead in there is that he's been part of that that process already. So definitely, that's yeah, cool. That's fun. What do you think over the last couple of years of being at Marvin has been your most favorite sermon series to preach? Okay, so Apostles Creed series surprised me. Yeah, because I thought I'm going to enjoy it because I like teaching doctrine yeah. of the church, but I was shocked at how many people were like, "I've never heard it taught this way." And why don't we say the Apostles' Creed? Right. Like, so the the response to that was surprise, a, a good surprise for yeah. people, and so people really love that. Um, teaching through Colossians right now is one of my favorites. Teaching through the Book of James last year was great, and then probably the um, John Mark Comer book that inspired yeah. the the hurry. Yeah. Um, Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, right? Yeah, that book, yeah. And, and I think, I, did we call the series the same thing? I can't remember. But I think we did. Actually, yeah. yeah. So that was really great. I think that challenged people in spiritual formation in a cool way. And then I think the last one would be that I really like, I'm about to name all of them. Um, <laughs> we did a series called, was it Press On? Hmm. It was during Lent, and it was on the transformational stops of, okay. of like the discipleship journey. That yeah. one's really fun. I've preached that in both venues. I mean, both uh, churches I've served. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Will you preach it in the next church? I think so. Probably. The statistics are starting to get outdated now. Oh, okay. Like it was almost on the verge. Now is that what spurred the kind of the survey that we did? Is it was, that similar? It, just fit, it fit with it, and it, it was at the same it. time. With the, the discipleship yeah. um, pathway Because the stuff. pathway, we asked people to take a survey and figure right. out where they were. Well, right. this is the same. This was similar stuff, and we, we on purpose stripped some of the language so they wouldn't uh, compete. And yeah. They lined up a little bit better. So That's cool. Good. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it was fun. Um, so when you, when you leave Marvin, you're going to be on staff while you're – preparing to plant a church, but at Conroe, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so why don't we talk a little bit about, about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I, I, my title is going to be like executive pastor. I think my business card says executive pastor at first Methodist Conroe. Okay. Um, I'll have some roles on staff at their church. Their church, uh, building size is like the same as Marvin. They probably worship a little bit less than what Marvin does on Sunday, but it's a, it's a church that's been there for a long time mm-hmm. in Conroe, um, right on 105. And so if you've ever driven in Conroe, you'd, you've seen it. It's like a okay. massive, big, big building right there. So I'll, I'll have some responsibilities on campus, helping to, to teach and preach a little bit and leading some, par- some departments. Yeah. 
but I'll also, uh, the, the primary responsibility I'll have is to be, begin building community in a development that's about six miles from the church. Right. It's six miles in Houston, might as well be 100 miles. Yeah. And so it's in Willis, which is just north of Conroe, a development called Woodlands Hills. The McMahons have moved into that neighborhood. The denomination has bought eight point something acres of land right at the front of that, that development. That development has 5,000 homes planned, 600 are built already. Yeah. Uh, so the more, the rest are coming in the next couple of years. 5,000 planned. 5,000 kind of planned. To think it's, about that. it's like a city unto itself. And then two developments next to it that add up to another 7,000. So 12,000 wow. new homes going into this area. Yeah. And we, we're going to be a part of that. Um, just really thrilled and excited. I've, I studied church planning uh, when I was at Asbury uh, yep. Theological Seminary doing my master's. Thought I was going to plant, um, and it just fell through when I was in Houston. And right. so um, then started having kids, and my family started to grow, and I thought maybe, maybe planting has passed me by, and I'm just not going to happen. Um, I've always been very, like, um, I always have always had church planting um attitudes or right. skills. Yeah. So I thought like I could go into existing churches and change culture and, and re reform some things and change things. So I've always kind of operated that way. Yeah. That's that church planning in me. Right. And then, so I thought that window was closed and then this, they, the conference approached me about going to do this and I thought, man, this sounds really fun. And Something that I think God, as I look back over my story, something God has been at work in. Yep. And I think my time at, um, in both of my schools, in both of my appointments, in everything else up to this point, including my time at Marvin, has been preparing me for, right. for this work. So. so how did that feel when you when you, you said you kind of have had this desire for a long time or did in the past and maybe yeah. thought kind of the door closed? Yeah. How did that feel when, when you saw that door open again? Well, it was amazing, but it was also like, um, it was really hard to hear. Like it, one of the things like if you had asked me in December, I think I probably told my staff, like I always yeah. get anxious, even if I think there's no way I'm going to be moved when appointment season's coming, you just kind of like have this gut feeling of like, ugh, I hope, yeah. it, I hope I don't get a phone call. Right. And so like, if you'd asked me in the fall, like I would hope that I wouldn't have to even consider anything else. Cause that's hard. Yeah. And sure enough, when I got the phone call, it was really hard, like tears. Like, I don't think I could even tell my wife right away. Right. Cause I just, it, that's just such a big change and transition for us and really hard for us to consider when we, we love Tyler and love Marvin. Right. Um, but as we processed that and prayed over it and fasted and, um, we really felt clear like God was calling us to this. Yeah. And so there's some confidence and assurance because you feel right. that it still makes, it's still really hard and sad mm -hmm. because you've got, you've got to mourn and grieve this change because right. we love people here. And so it was, it's still, even now it's still mixed, mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're excited. We love our house there. It's weird me being in Tyler right now, and I can't drive home to, like, Lauren and the kids. Like, yeah. that's a weird thing because she's not, like, right around the corner. So. Right. But So, anyways, we're but we're thrilled. It'll be really fun. So, the first thing I do in Willis is I'll office a little bit at First Methodist Conroe, but I'm going to start going to HOA meetings. Yeah. I'm going to start going to community gatherings, start trying to meet people. Yeah. I've already started trying to meet neighbors. I put together a core like lead team, a strike mm -hmm. team of uh, people that are going to help us start. So we're talking to friends from out of town that might even consider uprooting their family and moving wow. to join us. Um, just bringing those people around that might be maybe could work where anywhere and come help us start a church. And so we're going through that process right now um, and we just start right away. That's awesome. Yeah. W hopefully we have small groups, some class meetings that are in our home probably. Yeah. And then a Christmas event. And then maybe by next Easter, we have some kind of worship service. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe outside. Maybe outside. There's this community center where they've got an, an amphitheater right yeah. in the middle of the, of the community. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's cool.
<laughs> Sorry about that, Nick. We'll see. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't drop this in there. That'd be weird. All right. Last thing. Um, I'd just be curious to hear kind of where you think Marvin is headed. Yeah. Um, some of your thoughts on that, if yeah. you wouldn't mind sharing that. Yeah. So there's a lot of, I know, I think Marvin's gone through a lot of transition over the last five years. Mm-hmm. You, now you got two pastors coming as I leave. You've got uh, children's ministry, student ministry, all filled. That was a big turnover there. Yep. Um, but they're full staff. Um, you know, the person that's producing this right now, our digital ministries yep. director, Nick, he's he's come on. Uh, new connections person. A lot of, just a lot of transition. Yeah. A lot of change in discipleship philosophy. Yeah. Adding classes and bands. Uh going through that study the congregation, we'll study the congregation again later. Right. So just a lot happening. And as I was praying about this, and if you guys hear me preach on my last Sunday, I'll, you'll hear this again, but I feel like this is an inflection point for Mm -hmm. Marvin. I I really do feel like if you, if you, uh, 10 years from now, if you look back, you could probably circle either this moment or like these two years as a, an inflection point yeah. where there was a significant change in culture and environment and what's happening. And I think, I think a lot of factors go into that, mm-hmm. uh, how we respond to COVID, how we right. respond to pandemic, new people coming in, yep. um, new staff, things like that. But in this inflection point, there's some things that are shifting for me. One, I think we have shifted or we are shifting away from consumerism Mm. of this experience. Now, if you go into our worship venues, CORE is built like a a movie theater. Mm -hmm. You don't participate in a movie. Like I went to go see a movie last night and I was a consumer. I sat, I watched like the whole movie. I had no part of the movie. Like there, and that's the way you're being entertained. Yes. I was being entertained. And that's, that's like core has even the physical space for that. Right. And we're trying to shift away from that. Yeah. Um, and I think that there's a shift happening to invite people to live out their faith and not just consume something on Sunday, not, not just be tied, uh, to the church, let the church monopolize your faith, but you actually live out your faith. Right. So that's one shift I see. I think, uh, discipleship, there's a shift from Christian education only to, um, accountability and vulnerable relational, uh, lived out discipleship. That's good. And I think that that's shifting. I think we have a shift in leadership and what we think about leaders. Right. Um, where a leader at some point has in the world's eyes or in Tyler's eyes or whatever has a a view of like banker, lawyer, um, certain number of degrees, financial, uh, socioeconomic kind of standing, um, probably some uglier in like unsaid Mm -hmm. subtle things. We think about leaders that can be racist or can be like, you know, just different stuff involved in that. But we really do have a certain view. And I think for a long time, Marvin has been a part of that culture. And right. now I think there's a shift in no leaders are people that are leading others in disciple making right. that are helping people to walk with Jesus. Right. And those leaders don't have to be charismatic. Mm-hmm. They don't have to have like, um, authoritarian decision making skill set. Right. They don't have to have all of this. Um, so we're shifting away from that. Um, and then the last thing I think is, um, there's this, there's this great like image of being a fortress versus being on the frontier. And I think Marvin has grown to be such a big steeple church that naturally we have become a fortress where we protect what's here. Right. Instead of being on the frontier where we're innovative and going out to creatively meet people, Mm -hmm. reach people for the sake of Christ. And I, I think this one is very underdeveloped if, if, if I'm right here, Mm. but I feel like we're being challenged again 
to not just be a fortress, but to be a frontier again, That's to cool. be on the frontier yep. and to think of creative ways. I think Nick, again, the digital ministries person hire, I think that's a sign of that uh, right. starting to happen. So anyways, a lot of cool stuff that I'm thrilled about. I don't like, I want to be clear. I don't think that this had any, not anything, but this wasn't John Wayne's doing in the last two years. There's right. a lot of factors that, that were playing into this and I'm right. And I'm not even getting to see the development of right. it right now. So I'm kind of sad about right. it, but I'm very excited about more Marvin and, core and you guys and the staff and y'all's yeah. role in all of that and, and seeing those shifts down the road. That's cool. What do you think? Yeah, I think that resonates a lot with me. Um, it's, uh, well, what you were saying about the fortress, yeah. the fortress thing. Yeah. I think, um, I think I've thought before too, it's easy to get into the, 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 what am I trying to say? It's easy to fall into the thing of like the, ch the church has to offer all the things and the goal yes. is to kind of keep people here and, right. and have an answer or a program or a something for everything. Right. But that's not really the goal of right. the church. You right. Know? That right. The, you know, meeting and, and discipleship and like you said, accountability too. There are a lot right. of new things kind of we're walking into, but, but I think the goal is to, to get people back out into the community. And yeah. We should be a sitting yeah, church. Yeah. And not and always, not like trying to throw the biggest VBS right. in the whole world right. because that's how we got to lure people into the fortress. Right. That I'm not saying it's bad. We're right. going to have a great VBS. Right. I know, I know Marvin's going to do it big. But that cannot be our primary mode or philosophy of ministry or what we think about or right. even even like unsaid, implied philosophy of ministry. Right. So most of these things are not ever thought about or communicated on purpose. They are mm -hmm. just unsaid, inferred, competing kind of philosophies. Right. And so what I'm kind of hoping to do even now and on the last couple of weeks, but really over the last year is name some of those. Yeah. Hey, I think this is a competing thing. I think we have two different views of leadership, right? right. I've tried to say that out loud several mm -hmm. times. Um, and I think that we're seeing an inflection where some of those are changing. And that's really exciting. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that I, that really resonates with me too is, um, discipleship. Yeah. Not so much just being Christian teaching, which is great to have. Right. Um, but I think we all are in need of accountability. Yeah. We're all in need of discipleship. And there are probably more, way more people than we realize who are like hungry for that kind of thing too. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't get that when you're just passing by someone on a Sunday morning. Right. Um, and, you know, to, to, to be cliche, I guess, but, you know, people wearing masks and yeah, everything's fine. And yeah, I had a great week. I'm having a great weekend. We're busy. We're doing all this stuff. But to really get to like, how, how are you actually or what's going on in your life or yeah. what are you working through? How is your marriage? That's the kind of stuff um, that... I, I think more people probably a uh, super high percentage of people would say, I, I really need some discipleship. I yes. really need some accountability. And, and I, cause I want to, I want to keep, I want to go for the long haul, you know? Yeah. So I think that's really cool. That's really strong. Yeah. There's a book yeah. called the cure. Um, and I may get the quote wrong where he talks about uh, when we wear masks, the only mm -hmm. thing that people are able to love is our mask. Right. And I think that's pretty obvious. Um, and I remember when I first got here and we first came back to in-person worship, even though people were eager to be back, I still remember newcomers going, people are nice, but it feels disingenuous. Mm. It just doesn't feel like it's genuine nice. Mm. It feels like fake nice. And I think that's changed here. I think so. And I think it's because people are starting to really take off their mask and grow in like vulnerability. And this, I, I really hope this becomes a place where um, it's okay to struggle with, with one another. It's okay to be honest with one another. It's okay to admit like Buffalo, New York last week, we don't mm. have answers for this. Right. Like this is really hard. Right. And you have a different idea of gun policies than I have right. a different idea of gun policies and we vote differently on this. And right. as a matter of fact, voting is really not going to completely solve any of it right we are not fighting against flesh and blood or even congress or right. anything else we are fighting against powers and principalities and right. so we can strive together and hold each other accountable to live out the gospel in the midst yeah. of tur turmoil and, and yeah. tumultuous times so yeah so i think that's happening that's really man, that's that's really exciting that's awesome yeah yeah so love you love you love yeah 
Marvin, love, um, thankful for, man, I'm really thankful for your friendship, and I'm really thankful for uh, my time here, and um, it feels like 10 years, even though it's been two. Some yeah. of, some people listening and watching think I've been here like five minutes. <laughs> um, so in many ways, it's felt like 10 years. I think that was part of how hard life has right. been for a lot, all of us, for sure. Right. But, um, but it's been really good time. Mm. Um, it has learned a lot and just, just grateful for it. Yeah. And I, I wanted to say too, before we wrap up, but I'm grateful for you. And I know that I speak for yeah. so many people when I just say, we're going to miss you mm. and enjoyed getting to know you and working together. And like you said, even on a friendship level, um, I, I know I've already said to you earlier in the week too, but there are lots of ways that you've made a big impact on, mm -hmm. um, my, my job here, my work, my, my personal life, all that kind of stuff. So that, Thanks, yeah, that doesn't go unnoticed. I'm grateful for you. So, we're still good. Yeah. We're, we get to be co-laborers and friends right. even moving forward. It, we yeah. just have to work a little harder for it. So, yeah. yeah, that's right. Sweet. All right. Thanks guys. Thanks yeah. for listening too.